And good evening, one and all, and welcome to the X-Zone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next three hours, I am your host. I am your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the X-Zone comes to you live Monday through Friday from 11 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the X-Zone Broadcast Network and on Talk Stream Live. Now, if you'd like to send us an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com, on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our radio website where you can find out what we've done in the past, what we're doing today, and where we're going in the future, because we don't have a crystal ball, we just know what we're going to be doing, www.exxonradio.com. Two exciting guests for us to start this week off Exxon Nation, as well as a new month. Darren Evans and Rosemary Ellen Guiley are a special guest, and they've teamed up to collaborate on a first and definitive book about the most terrifying supernatural phenomenon, Zozo, a powerful demonic entity that has plagued and attacked thousands of people around the world. The Zozo phenomenon, to be published by Visionary Living Inc., will document and examine the dark history and vicious attacks of this entity, and describe how victims have had their lives turned into nightmares. Joining me now are Darren Evans and the one and only Miss Rosemary Ellen Guiley. To both of you, welcome to the Exxon. And Rosemary, welcome back. Well, thank you, Rob. It's uh, been a real treat to come back on the show after an absence of a while. Both of us have been real busy. Yeah. And I'm just just delighted to reconnect. Hey, I've got to tell you, congratulations. You were telling me before we went on air, since you and I both talked here on the show, you've written another 20 books? Oh, at least I would say. Um, I'm about halfway between 60 and 70 now. I'm, it's, it's right around 64, 65. I... Uh, had um, a couple of other books out this year. I've got one coming out in August. My gosh. Uh, I'm, you know, one of those prolific writers. I just love what I do, and there's so many things to explore. And Darren Evans is with us for the first time. Darren, welcome to the Exxon. Hey, Rob, thanks for having me. Um, uh, you know, As you know, uh, Rose and I have uh, collaborated on a very interesting book, and mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's very good to be with both of you tonight. All right, listen, uh, tell me about the Zozo phenomenon, Rosemary. This is uh, about an entity that likes to harass people who use spirit boards or Ouija boards. And it calls itself Zozo. Uh, The Ouija board seems to be its favored method of attacking people, but it does attack people in other ways as well, who use spirit communication tools like automatic writing or ghost boxes, dowsing. Uh, primarily, mm-hmm. though, it attacks the Ouija board users, and it starts out as Mr. Nice Guy some, sometimes, and then gets progressively nastier to the point where people start suffering phenomena. They can have haunting phenomena in their homes. They can feel personally attached. They can become ill, have accidents. They can go wow. through all kinds of hell. And how did you both come up with this, the, the idea to write a book about this, Evan? I'm sorry, Darren. Um, Rose had contacted me um, back in 2007, I believe, for um, a project that she uh, wrote with uh, colleague Rick Fisher. Uh, the name of the book was Ouija Gone Wild, and, she, and uh, Rose had heard about some of the uh, experiences that I shared uh, on my blog that I started in 2008 uh, when I started documenting people's experiences mm-hmm. with this particular entity. And so um, that's when uh, Rose and I began to uh, initially work together, and it culminated in this book, uh, the first official examination of uh, you know what I coined the Zozo Phenomenon. Fascinating. Um, when did you first learn about the Zozo Phenomenon, Rosemary? It was in uh, my work in the paranormal. I've been an investigator, researcher, and author full-time now since 1983. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always been interested in spirit communication devices, the ways that we can open up doorways to other realms. Well, the Ouija board has had a problematic relationship for 
sometime. It didn't start out that way when it was new in the late 19th century. It was um, just an, an entertainment device, a social device for people to use. But over the years, it, it got to be um, viewed more problematically. It was used as a horror device in films and mm -hmm. Various people in the paranormal spoke out against it as as being um, a doorway to the demonic realm. And I think that's uh, largely because a lot of people misused it. But uh, anyway, uh, I keep my eye on these sorts of things. And uh, the stories about Zozo started to surface. Mm. I thought, well, who the heck is Zozo? And, you know, what's going on here? So being a, you know, curious Georgette, right. uh, I, I start researching, and uh, that's what led me to Darren, uh, who is a, a Zozo survivor. Wow. And uh, in, in, the more the more I learned mm -hmm. about Zozo, the more fascinated I became. All right, folks, we've got to take our first commercial break, Exo Nation. Two very special guests this first hour for the first day of the month, August the 1st, 2016. Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Darren Evans. The Zozo Phenomenon. More on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon, live and around the world, on the Exxon Broadcast Network, and, of course, on TalkStream Live. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking about the Zozo phenomenon. It's a, it's a book, but it's based on fact. Joining me this hour, Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Darren Evans. And Darren, tell us about your personal encounter with the Zozo. Um, Rob, I believe it was in 1984, there was a very strange um, spirit board found underneath a house uh, across the street from my grandmother. Uh, it was my girlfriend's house, and a plumber found this very strange Ouija board, and it was double-sided, and I'd never seen anything quite like it. I'd never seen a Ouija board before, and I was a teenager at the time. Um, so here we have a double-sided board. But, uh, what was very strange, not only about the board, but it was surrounded by jars of preserved blackbirds. And so that, that's how my involvement with the phenomenon began, was with this, the, the discovery of this particular board. Mm -hmm. And so we began to have sessions. Uh, the house was already haunted. Uh, a lot of people had experienced a lot of strange things in the house. And then once, we, um, once, once the board was found, uh, that's where my involvement, it, it, it had Zozo inscribed, uh, on the opposite side, or the dark side of the board that we called it, on one side was a standard William Fold board, a uh, very large board made of, made of wood, mm -hmm. uh, square corners. Uh, and so as, as far as uh, that's where, you know, in 1984, that's where uh, my involvement with, uh, with the whole phenomenon began. Has the, the, uh, the phenomenon or the activity of Zozo increased over the years, Rosemary? It seems to, Rob, and some of it may be uh, voluntary reporting because uh, when Darren started putting the word out about Zozo and his own experiences, that encouraged a lot of people to come forward with theirs. That's one of the things that fascinated me about this phenomenon was that it was not isolated. It was not just a few people, and the pattern and experiences that people had were very similar across the board, people all over the globe. Uh, and... I think that uh, because uh, the use of the Ouija board has gone up in recent years, thanks a lot to uh, television and film, uh, that more people are experimenting with it. People who don't have much grounding in the paranormal, a lot of them are looking for excitement and thrills, and some of them even want to contact something scary. So that, in turn, has provided more opportunities mm -hmm. for uh, dark entities like Zozo to, uh, to manifest. How do how does Zozo select 
their victims. Is it a single entity? Is it a multiple of entities? Or and what do we know about Zozo itself? Well, um, that's a, that's a great question right there. And um, you know, one thing about Rose is, is uh, she loves to collaborate with people, mm-hmm. and that's what um, that's where we came together on this project. Was was basically. Um, what I find most interesting about the phenomenon is how it ties in to historical texts, apocrypha, uh, grimoire. Um, you know, when I was able to find, uh, you know, in, in, an, in a grimoire written in the 1800s that Zozo was listed as an actual demon, that, uh, that really raised a lot of eyebrows in the, in the paranormal community. And so... Are we dealing with a demon? Are we dealing with a you know a, a non-human spirit? What are we dealing with here? And the beauty of this book, with with Roseberry and her experiences mm-hmm. uh, in documenting the paranormal, uh, we really look at it from all angles. And um, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of recent things that have happened. Uh, you know, Joseph Stalin was known as Zozo when he was younger. Mm-hmm. There's there's all kinds of very strange connections going on. Uh, yeah, with UFOs, with aliens, with all kinds of different phenomena uh, that seem to be connected with this particular um, symbol or word or sigil. And it, so it's, it, 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 the research is still going on, and uh, it's, uh, it, you know, I'm very thankful to have, um, to have Rose, Rose Marilyn Guiley um, to, to help sure. me research a lot of the findings that are in the book. Zoe is a very popular name these days for kids. Uh, Zozo is a nickname for Zoe. Um, is it, you know, can we actually say that just because somebody is called Zozo, there's a connection with the Zozo demonic factor? Well, one of the things we found in the research is that where wherever you look mm-hmm. uh, with the term Zozo and even its single-syllable root Zo there are problematic connections. And uh, I have not researched the name Zoe myself, mm-hmm. but um, given the the track record that the Z word and the Z sound and this particular name have had, uh, it would raise a lot of questions with me in terms of whether or not I'd want to use it as a name. Uh, it's... Uh, either uh, a a name of derision Mm -hmm. or it's got uh, dark and demonic associations or even sexual uh, connotations. And that's from culture to culture. Uh, This entity does seem to have multiple personalities, too, just adding on to what Darren said about is it a collective or a single. Mm -hmm. Uh, This entity has alter egos, and it's Zozo, Zo, Za, Zef, Zam, uh, um, a lot of kind of Z names. It also goes by Lily and Mama quite frequently. And uh, sometimes it manifests in, in multiple guises. It seems to shapeshift from one to the other. Now, there are entities that are masterful shapeshifters, but um, it, it is possible that mm-hmm. we're dealing with a collective here uh, of entities that uh, like to boomerang around uh, personalities sure. in order to keep people off balance. But but isn't it true that Zoe, the name Zoe and its variables, uh, you know, is the first is a female name uh, that originally came from the word in Greek for the word of life, and it uh, also has connotations with the with the Bible as Eve. So how can we put this name just because it starts with a Z and a Z and you know because of the Zozo phenomenon how can we actually say that it has negative connotations? Because well, we, we found oh, know, I'm sorry. Rose. <laughs> no, go We've ahead. Found, I'm sorry. Rose. We have found the, the the actual name Zozo used in ancient literature mm-hmm. as being the onic. And so and this this is uh, like like Rosemary was talking about it, it crosses the uh, not only geographic divides, but cultural language. Um, and so w- in the book, we're able to, um, you know, document these different meanings mm-hmm. and translations and definitions of not only Zozo, but Zo itself, uh, and all the, the, the very bewildering and uh, very evil uh, connections that, that exist. And so while I've been contacted by several people that name their pets, their, their, mm-hmm. their babies, Zo, Zoe, um, and you know, and a lot, of, a lot of those people do not report any paranormal activity. Right. And so I really think it has to do, um, 
researchers at Purdue recently was have come out with research regarding name recognition and the way it applies to politics. And so I'm, I'm beginning to see this same recognition, um, name recognition found in, 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 you know, in the spirit world, in, in the world of demonology. Um, and, you know, one thing that's very, very important about this whole Zozo phenomenon is the letter Z and all these different Z entities, as I call them, that mm-hmm. surface in Ouija boards. And so what is it about the letter Z? Uh, we go into that in the book as well. All right. The fact that uh, the letter Z is the last letter of the alphabet, does this have anything to do with the alpha to the omega, the beginning to the end? Well, Z was not always at the end of the alphabet. In Mm -hmm. ancient times, it was, um, I believe, the seventh letter. And it's uh, been one of the least used letters throughout history. In fact, it was even kicked out of the Latin alphabet uh, for a while during early Roman times. Uh, There was... um, um, some official who didn't like the sound of it, didn't like the z sound mm-hmm. of Z. And uh, uh, even Shakespeare called it thou horse and Zed. Uh, you know, nobody knows what to do with Z. And it seems to be a very problematic letter. So is this one of the reasons why this entity has chosen this name? It calls itself the King of Kings as well. And uh, it is a sound and a name mm-hmm. that is attention-getting. It's exotic. It's mysterious. Uh, I think energetically it evokes a certain response in human beings. But when you look throughout history, the, the letter Z itself, it, it doesn't really have all this negative connotation. Are we putting a lot of negativity into it because today it fits very well within the realm of the paranormal? If you look at the history of the letter Z, Rob, there is a, a definite um, evil attachment to it. Mm-hmm. It's the letter of the zigzag. It's the letter of prophecy. It's the it's the uh, it's the letter of uncertainty. Uh, it, yes, this, yes. this letter Z has a definite, uh, a very mysterious and dark past. Well, uh, just in not only its pronunciation, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the least used letter, but it's it's sur- it continues to surface. And all these different um, Z entity names, and, and sure. it's really caused me to open up uh, almost a new chapter of demonology that I call Zemonology, mm-hmm. because of, of, of all these entities that surface on Ouija boards uh, using this, this strange letter Z. But in the Semitic uh, symbology, going back in time, the, the letter Z was, uh, was, in, was meant for a sword or a weapon. Yeah, in Egyptology, yes, the, the Zayin, the sword, it striketh out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the how, letter of the zigzag. You know, I, 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 I'm the kind of guy who looks at something and says, all right, there's always a negative and there's always a positive. We live in a binary existence. Where there's good, there's evil. Where there's up, there's down. Where there's in, there's out. So I'm trying to understand the rational behind everything being negative with the letter Z. Now, I understand that based on your research, you certainly have found a, a, a number of, of circumstances that certainly would lead and point to a negative side of that letter of the alphabet, the 26th letter of the, of the alphabet. But there has to be some good in there as well, isn't there? Absolutely. Well, Rob, we don't say that everything about Z is bad. Uh, What we do point out is that Z has been a very problematic letter compared to other letters of the Latin alphabet. And even when you look at the meaning of sword or weapon, this entity comes on uh, like a weapon itself. Mm -hmm. And so these are characteristics. Uh, the, The dark side of Z are the characteristics that are embodied in this entity, Zozo, which has never had, this entity has never had a positive agenda with people. It's always been negative. But And so we do find some interesting negative associations with Z that uh, seem to express aspects of the activities and personality of this entity. Uh, in the book, we do look at a lot of explanations mm-hmm. for who Zozo is. Is Zozo a demon? We found demon, uh, demon references to Zozo. Could it be Jin? And I've done a lot of research on the jin, and mm-hmm. Zozo has jin characteristics sure. too. Is it a thought form? 
Uh, I think that, uh, yes, human beings do project energy that collects and coalesces as a thought form that could contribute to this. And in right, fact, it folks, may not be possible to have one single explanation. Folks, I've got to take my news break at the bottom of the hour. Exo Nation, our guests tonight are Darren Evans and Rosemary Ellen Guiley. We're talking about the Zozo phenomenon, and I will get your questions that you're asking me to ask our guests when we come back on the other side of this break. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you live and around the world from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send an email, Exxon at ExxonRadioTV.com and all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and of course, our website, www.ExxonRadioTV.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't you dare go away. Nation, we're talking about the Zozo phenomenon this hour. Darren Evans and Rosemary Ellen Guiley are with us. They are the authors of the Zozo phenomenon. And um, let me see. I'm going to field this one to to uh, to Darren. Darren, ha- is there a common thread between the people that Zozo attacks, Zozo affects, or is it anyone that that just happens to cross Zozo's path? Um, Rob, in my research, it appears to be very random. However, there are similarities. Um, Teenagers seem to be the most apt to experience um, the different levels of uh, what I call those encounters. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, with, with the whole Ouija and Ouija films being, you know, marketed and directed towards that whole teenage, um, uh, demographic you know that they do seem to have the most experiences um but it's uh it it goes beyond that and and there's there's um a lot of people a lot of older people uh, people from all different walks of life Mm -hmm. lawyers doctors attorneys have had those encounters and and it's caused um a lot of people to um who have never heard of it to um research it online and they come across um my website and they um they contact me and they share their stories with me and throughout the last eight years i've um documented hundreds of encounters all right what is that we share we share a lot of those in the book what is the difference between a zozo encounter and an encounter that is manifested through a regular ouija board uh, rosemary Well, Zozo makes appearances through regular Ouija boards, um, boards that are bought in stores, and also homemade boards that people Mm -hmm. make themselves. The one that Darren found was quite unique. It had been handmade and uh, was double-sided, whereas most of the cases are uh, people using just regular spirit boards, whether or not they're the trademarked uh, Ouija board. Right. And there are patterns to some of the experiences and the victims. As Darren mentioned, uh, many of them uh, are young people. They're out looking for excitement and thrills. They they really don't know anything about the spirit world, and uh, they manage to rather blindly open up uh, a very wrong doorway. And then other people uh, are not particularly looking for thrills. They don't want to contact the dark side, but they're curious. And I have noticed in my investigations of haunted places over the years that there are certain individuals who seem to, what I call, have thin boundaries. There's something in their energy field or consciousness that makes them more susceptible Mm -hmm. To the paranormal and so if they're in the right place at the right state of consciousness doing the right thing right. and something is able to get through it could be something negative that will jump on them does it have anything to do with the state of the mind of the person who is attempting to use this form of divination as to how or what comes across 
Sometimes it does, yes. And I have seen uh, market tendencies Mm -hmm. toward a negative experience. If people are going through some sort of emotional upheaval in life, they're stressed, uh, if they're suffering from grief, anger, depression, anxiety, uh, those sorts of conditions seem to generate emotional energy that will attract negative entities. And that goes across Mm -hmm. the board, whether we're talking about Zozo or demonic entities or jinn. They're opportunistic entities and spirits that are drawn to human chaos, and they feed off that energy. So yes, that can have a lot to do with it. And uh, I always tell people that regardless of the tool you use, when Mm -hmm. you are doing spirit communication, this is a very serious business. You need to be in a good frame of mind. You need to be well rested and you especially need to be well focused. Is it possible that the manifestation of Zozo or any other negative entity that may or may not be coming through the board is actually a manifestation of the of the uh, of the participants own dark side? It's certainly a possibility, and and Darren and I did take a look at that. How much does thought form energy Mm -hmm. uh, get involved in this? And these things get very hard to separate. In fact, the paranormal... It's not a pie chart that you can make neat little uh, demarcations on. It's very hard sometimes to separate the apples from the oranges because it is a quite blurry landscape. And uh, it's like in uh, physics where you're never really a a discrete, completely separate observer. You're Mm -hmm. always a participant. And so if people are generating a certain kind of energy, let's say they have some repressed anger, um, could that form a thought form energy that then becomes Zozo or um, at least contributes to a Zozo experience? Well, there have been many cases in parapsychology literature uh, that have been studied by scientists that, that indicate, yes, mm-hmm. human energy can uh, create a lot of negative phenomena. Uh, the, the question is, we just don't know where one leaves off and the other starts. Let me ask you something. Is it possible to do an experiment to try to invoke Zozo under a controlled setting, under a scientifically controlled setting to actually prove the existence or non-existence of this phenomenon? Well, I'd like to give an answer and then throw that also to Darren since he's had so much engagement with this entity. Mm -hmm. I have uh, participated in some experiments uh, with my uh, co-author Rick Fisher, the first Ouija book I did, Ouija Gone Wild, Mm -hmm. and we had uh, some controlled uh, uh, experiments involving the Ouija board to see if we could uh, invoke uh, certain kinds of presences, or uh, sometimes even any kind of presence, and right, the but, results but I, were just uh, non-conclusive. Okay, so Darren, how about you? Is it possible to invoke Zozo using a divination board in order to actually ascertain under controlled situations whether or not Zozo is in fact real or the manifestation of a person's dark side? Um, Rob, every time I put my fingers on a plant shit, it's there. And Mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that have contacted me where this entity takes over the board and they're no longer able to communicate with um, other entities uh, via spirit communication on on Ouija boards. And so um, I don't mess with them anymore because um, every time I do, it's there. And... um, there's a tremendous amount of people that mm-hmm. experience the same type of circumstance where this thing takes over a board. Mm-hmm. It appears some type of um, attachment to uh, people's lives. And that's what's very concerning to me, um, having experienced it, having uh, gone through um, you know, what I've gone through. And to be able to communicate and try to help individuals that have gone through similar circumstances with this entity has caused me a, a, a lot of headaches and a lot of um, research. A lot of uh, the research continues. Um, it's very interesting that you mentioned these experiments. Uh, when Rosemary and I attended um, WeGicon, there was a Danish researcher that was uh, putting on uh, eye tracking experiments um, in Baltimore at the hotel where the WeGicon presentation, uh, the whole uh, paranormal conference was being taken taken place. Zozo actually um, showed up and manifested during those experiments. Um, I was able to um, research uh, and interview uh, scientists at UBC that are 
uh, that were very actively involved in um, uh, Ouija experiments to um, to help uh, you know uh, uh, look into the subconscious mind. And there's some very interesting um, uh, results that that culminate with those experiences that they don't attribute to um, anything paranormal. But if you really look at it, um, it's they can't explain it. And so there, there's there, you know like a, like I said at WeGicon. There's a lot of people that they get, that get on these spirit boards and they, and they don't have any negative experiences. But there are a lot of people, a lot of people that have bad experiences, um, not only with you know with this particular entity, but others um, that I'm, I'm looking into as well. Um, and so, um, you know, the Ouija board harkens us to a time when you know there was a monster under the bed. Is that monster still there? You know. Um, I deal with the dark side of, of spirit communication with Ouija boards, and so it continues to be very controversial, Rob. All right. What would happen if there were, let's say, 15 people, each under, into, in a controlled setting, given a Ouija board, given the planchette? They had never heard of Zozo before. How many of those 15 do you think would actually contact Zozo or Zozo would contact? I don't think it's possible to anticipate how many. Um, many of the the people that we've encountered mm -hmm. uh, with Zozo experiences had never heard of the term Zozo until it showed up on the board and then they did some research on the Internet to try and find information and discovered that this was quite a, a phenomenon. But nobody's ever done experiments uh, to uh, try and get a percentage of people. Why not? Because this is the first time uh, the Zozo Phenomenon book that Darren mm -hmm. and I uh, have published this summer yeah. is the first time that anyone has put together a lot of information about Zozo, and we hope that this will stimulate some additional research. And Unfortunately, yet, the, the Ouija has mm, really has a stigma in sure the paranormal, and a lot of people don't even want to touch it. And you know, it's patently ridiculous because uh, you you are not guaranteed of having an experience with a board. You yeah. uh, can have benign experiences. Sure. But, you know, y um, when, when it comes to the, the, the Ouija board, when it, you know, you said that the Zozo phenomenon is, is basically new, and yet when you Google Zozo... Man, there's there's tons of information out there. There, uh, there's a lot of information yeah. on the internet about just about everything. Sure. But, but how much is true uh, and how know, much is valid? Putting, putting something together. There's a lot of misinformation too. There's a lot of misinformation. Sure, you know the 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 internet is the largest septic tank that man has ever created. There's more crap in it than there is anything else. What we did with the Zozo phenomenon was distill a, a lot of information, a lot of testimonies from people, uh, the research we did, and uh, in order to make sense of this phenomenon, can we explain it? Uh, can it be predicted? Um, if people have problems, mm -hmm. what can they do about it? And uh, this, these are very good first steps in terms of educating people okay. about this particular phenomenon. Let me ask you, can people who experience the, the Zozo phenomenon suffer psychological damage? Absolutely. All right. That's I, the, okay, I, hold, I on, hold, on here, hold on here, hold on here, hold on here. Hold on here, hold on here, hold on here. No, no, wait, to... wait a second. I'm not finished asking my question. I'm sorry. Second part of my question is, are you people qualified to give advice on a psychological matter? Could you, by giving advice, make it worse? Well, Rob, we don't uh, diagnose cases and dispense advice. And I do consult on a lot of different kinds of uh, paranormal issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually one of the first persons to point out when it might be a good idea to bring in a licensed therapist or a medical doctor on well, some issues. Shouldn't that be the first Where, thing that's done? Well, where uh, the advice that we give in the book is if you are going to use a Ouija mm -hmm. board, here are some sound ways that you should approach the board. And if you have problems, mm -hmm. uh, 
then uh, here are some ways that uh, some resources and ways that you can resolve those problems. And I'm often referring people to healers, okay. to counselors and therapists. Uh, when something becomes intensely lodged in a household or a person feels that they have an attachment, mm -hmm. this is not the time to bring in uh, amateurs. It is the time to get professional help. Shouldn't professional help be the first thing that anybody does? I think a lot of it depends uh, on the problem. And um, we hear from people who have... Uh, sort of one-off experiences. Mm -hmm. They they had an experience where Zozo showed up and it was kind of an unpleasant uh, session because the communicating entity seemed to uh, be rude and belligerent and it didn't go any further than that. Right. And then other, other people have cases where uh, they feel creepy afterwards and that they're watched. Some of this is, is paranoia. There might be uh, haunting phenomena that erupts in a house. And sometimes it goes away after a while. Sometimes it persists. If anything persists, mm -hmm. then it's, uh, it's time to, to start looking around for professional help. Now, it's up to an individual uh, how fast they want to do that. And uh, some people will uh, try and, and deny their problems before they get help. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people think that they can solve it themselves and... Um, they don't after a while, so they go looking for other help. So there's there's no, like, um, universal, simple remedy for these cases. Uh, many of them do get to be quite complex. Right. And sometimes by the time we hear about these mm -hmm. cases, uh, they were things that happened in the past. And so we're hearing about how the case started and right. how it went on and how it resolved. Uh, and we're we're getting the history of the case rather than a case in in uh, mid progress. You know, our time is running faster, and there there is a question I'd like to ask for a listener. Do you believe that Ouija boards are dangerous? And this is coming to us from uh, Charlotte in uh, South Carolina. I'll I'll give my I answer. Andy. Oh, go ahead, Darren. Um, just you know. My opinion, based on, you know, years of research, is, mm -hmm. is they can be dangerous. And like Rosemary was talking about the susceptibility or these boundaries that people have right. um, when they get on a board, uh, whether it be laws of attraction, laws of name recognition, whatever the cases may be, there's a lot of factors going into a session, whether it be a Ouija board or automatic drawing. Uh, I've, been, I've been contacted by people who do automatic painting now. Um, we're really branching out in, in spirit communication, and, and um, this thing is, is, is surfacing uh, in recent years outside the board. Um, and and it re you know, before the modern invention of the Ouija board, there's documented evidence of this name being mm -hmm. uh, demonic, uh, lots and lots of connections. And so um, it, it continues to be a very um, uh, strange set of circumstances in dealing with uh, these these manifestations of these names that come through during these spirit communication seances. All right, we've got to take our final break. Please stand by. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Exxon Broadcast Network and Talk Stream Live. Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. until 2 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, 11 p.m. until 2 a.m. And then from 2 a.m. until 6 a.m. on the Talk Stream Live, as well as on the Exxon Broadcast Network, the best of the Exxon from the Exxon Vaults. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. Um, Let's see, I've got a couple of questions here for uh, our guests this hour. We're talking about the Zozo phenomenon, and our guests are Darren Evans and Rose Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Um, let me see. Question. If someone comes into contact with Zozo through the Ouija boards, can that person then pass the curse or demon to others? We've had some cases of um, multiple pe people being, mm -hmm. uh, you would say, infected uh, by Zozo phenomena, but usually they have been participants in the same session. 
and uh, whether or not some of that is kind of uh, cross-contamination of anxiety uh, among uh, the people involved. Uh, here again, these things are very hard to separate out. Um, Rob, I just would like to add my own quick thoughts here to the previous question of is the board mm -hmm. dangerous? The Ouija board is a tool, and like other spirit communication tools, and tools are neutral. They can be used for good. They can be used for bad, and people use tools in all kinds of ways when it comes to contacting spirits. And so the board itself is not going to cause anyone to have a bad experience, to be haunted, to be possessed. Uh, it's how the board is used, and it is the users who determine uh, the nature of any, any session with a tool. Now, the Ouija board has probably more of a problematic history mm -hmm. than most other tools because, for one thing, millions of boards are in use around the world relative to maybe a few thousand of other kinds of tools. And uh, it also tends to be a misused tool quite a bit. Uh, are there other elements that make this board uh, more uh, prone to problems? Um, that's one of the things that uh, researchers have, have tried to puzzle out. Does, does this particular tool en enable entities to have an easier access to people? Uh, I believe that um, people might be more open when they use a Ouija board because they've got a lot of uh, expectation going. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, guys, uh, where is your book going to be available? Because we've got about 30 seconds left. It's available on Amazon, uh, in hard print, Kindle, Nook, Kobo, uh, and iTunes on uh, in ebook format. And, uh, Darren, you've got a website for it. You want to give out that information? I'm sure it's zozophenomenon.com. All right. If you enjoy reading a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal. That's my producer hit the wrong button there, I think. Yeah. Sorry about that. Could you give the website again, please, Darren? Sure. It's uh, zozophenomenon.com. Uh, you can order the book there. Uh, like Rosemary said, Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, various other um, places to order the book. Uh, get the book, man. It's, it's uh, for anybody that's interested in the paranormal. It's a very good book. A must okay, have listen, for anyone. I, listen, guys, I hate to do this, but we have to say so long for now. We'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. 